When I'm wholesaling, the biggest problem that myself and others have is we find that we're running the time to actually find buyers. So what comes first, like the deal or the people? Okay, so here's the thing. The biggest problem with a lot of wholesalers, especially beginner wholesalers, is that they don't have the buyer list. They don't even know who their buyers are. They don't know where to actually wholesale the deals to. When they are able to negotiate something and lock that in on contract, they were like, oh my God, like I'm, my stress level went up. The clock is ticking. You only got seven days or 14 days to actually figure out how to assign this contract out for profit. You actually want to be building your buyer list. Stop driving around, handing out uh, flyers or door knocking, because the moment that you do that, you're wasting a lot of time here and you don't even know who you're selling the, uh, the product to, right? So you need to be building the buyer list. Understand their price, also understand their criteria. What are they actually looking for? And we need to understand their ARV. For example, the spread that they're looking for or a minimum profit. Once you have this, then that's where the deal sourcing start happening because now you're sourcing deal with a focus. You're not just finding deals just for the sake of finding. Exactly. You got you got to be finding the buyer first before you, you start sourcing the deal. Now, mm -hmm. if you're at a higher scale where you know this deal can definitely be super profitable, it's a different story. But most people start out with a uh, residential deals, something that doesn't cost a lot. And all the deals that we're looking at is a fixed offer. Find your investors, find your house flipper first, ask their criteria, their budget, and what's the minimum profit that they're, that they're hoping to make. And from there, farm uh, that specific area. How does this whole process actually look like because i feel like a lot of people are kind of confused about this one if you find buyer if i you source a deal but where do you actually get paid most people think that they can just do this and then they they can wholesale it and they get paid immediately after they uh, assign the contract to the buyer the answer is like wrong that's not how you get compensated okay usually when we're looking at this is that deal sourcing and by the way this goes uh, all the way here. So deal sourcing, you need to actually have another. So deal sourcing, by the way, this is securing another deal. Once you secure it, you look for the buyer, you arrange the visits. Okay, once you have the visit, people like it, and you, you guys uh, had a, a great price for for your uh, the value of the contract, this is where you have assignment of uh, a contract in place. Yeah. Okay, and you want the buyer at this point, you want the buyer to leave you another deposit, or you call that earnest money, right? To kind of cover the money that you actually pay, uh, pay the seller. This part, you actually pay to the seller's lawyer's office, title company, or mortgage, uh, like trust, uh, sorry, sorry, broker's trust account. And in here, you have your buyer to do the exact same thing to kind of cover up uh, here. Okay, so nobody's getting paid until the closing of the deal. Cash offer and quick closing is 30 days. You do get paid, get compensated on day 30th when the closing happened, but you don't get paid on day one. Day one is when you secure the, the deal. Some people have the misconception that day seven, for example, right? When you actually assign the contract out to another buyer, that's when they get paid. No, you don't get paid on day seven, you get paid on day 30th. What's a precaution that we can take to ensure that we can assign it before locking it in? You need to have the condition here, right? So when you're making an offer here, you definitely need to have a bit of condition here for the seller to understand that if this condition is not fulfilled or you're not satisfied with the condition. What conditions would there be? Approval of your business partner, walkthrough condition. You can negotiate any sort of condition if you want. Put that condition into your offer so that your, your deposit or earnest money is being protected. Which we'll talk about like what those conditions can look like another time. If you're a beginner wholesaler, it definitely takes a little time for you to actually go through the whole process before you can get compensated. But it's an extremely lucrative uh, business for you to get in. So it's worth a little work. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're looking to get into real estate wholesaling, there's another video for you to watch. And if you're looking to compress the time and learn the step-by-step -step in the next 30 days, make sure you fill out the application below. Our team will reach out to you.